A warm welcome to your Barbados Today Evening News update for Friday, May 7. Barbados was not listed among 12 countries on Britain's green list, part of a traffic light system of rules, announced today as the UK moves to ease its ban on travel. Barbados and other Caribbean destinations are on the amber list, which will require Brits returning home from these countries to isolate from home for at least five days. Brits are advised not to travel to these destinations at this time. Brits visiting countries on the green list will not need to quarantine from May 17. Tourism Minister Senator Lisa Cummins says, while they were not expecting any significant rebound in travel from the UK until later this year, today's announcement will hurt the sector. Residents in Hoyts Village St. James are not pleased that the abandoned Bagatelle metal dump is now being used to house old metals from bees recycling in King Garden, St. Thomas. Following a recent inspection, authorities ordered bees recycling operator Paul Bino to remove and dispose excessive piles of bulk material from the site deemed an environmental and health hazard. Residents who spoke with Barbados today expressed surprise that government did not inform them that the material would move to the Bagatelle site. Go on, Brent. Go on, Brent. We ain't want it down here. The left of the part is, um, they're going to catch some place out. Um, Oh, we're going to Get out there. What do you want down here? Ain't a help to me. It comes quite soon. It comes to the up up there. The fact that there has been increased activity over the last week or so, daily, trucks in and out, even on buying holidays, and you have class going on, people trying to do work, the noise is constant. And when we had, well, just after the ashfall, obviously, whenever a heavy truck goes through there, there's a lot of dust. As you said, I'm one of the closest residents. <laughs> and when they're compacting, you can hear all the machinery working. So it's a bit distracting because I have two children here that are trying to study. And with regards to the dust, yeah, I <laughs> let's say the ashfall prepared you for it because it is constant. I have to keep my bedroom window half closed because my office is there and the dust comes in and it's very annoying. My son is an asthmatic. His bedroom windows are permanently closed. I cannot open them now, even though you don't have to worry about it. Actually, yes, it is impacting on many levels. The one good thing is that since they're doing their working every day and compacting almost every day, you don't have to worry that much about mosquitoes. But yes, it's, it's not, it would have been nice for somebody to say something because up to this morning, I was wondering who to send my cleaning bill to. It was here before, we complained. Well, eventually it moved, but I definitely don't want it back here. Former prison inmates now have a fresh opportunity to earn a decent living. The Youth Entrepreneurship Scheme has partnered with Prison Fellowship Barbados to provide training for ex-offenders and persons on parole. Minister of Youth Dwight Sutherland told today's presentation of landscaping equipment to Prison Fellowship Barbados that incarceration has long-lasting effects and it's time to provide more programs to help those who commit petty crimes. When young men and women go to prison, and they return into society. If you don't engage them in a meaningful way, give them opportunities, then we, we have that word that we call recidivism, whereby they, they, they are re-incarcerated. And, and that, that is more despair in our society. Executive Director of the Prison Fellowship, Neil Dowden, says the partnership with the Youth Entrepreneurship Scheme will allow ex-inmates, young men and women, to be self-employed. We work in partnership with the Youth Entrepreneurship Scheme to have equipment available so that some of these guys who would have learned to work with these equipment in prison will be able to employ themselves outside of prison. We also appeal into um, corporate barbers anywhere, to, if you've got any debushing, etc. to be done, Prison Fellowship Barbados will come and work for you. The guys that will be supervised by our volunteers and the work will be professionally done. And um, we just want to help these young men as well as their families because it's not only the inmates that suffer, but when they cannot um, work, their families suffer. And up to just before Easter, Prison Fellowship Barbados 
after we came out of the lockdown, we had to give out about 300 hampers to help because things are getting a bit rough out of um, outside in, you know, in Barbados because of the virus, etc. So we're appealing to you to work with us as we try to help these young men. There's regional and international news after this short break. Regional news in Trinidad and Tobago, major revisions to public health regulations in a bid to curb spiraling COVID-19 infections have been announced by Minister in the Office of the Prime Minister, Stuart Young. Mahalia Joseph Wharton of TTT News reports from Port of Spain. In addition to the restrictions listed by Minister in the Office of the Prime Minister, Stuart Young, all construction work is to cease until May 23rd. This is a large movement of people and we're asking everyone just put pause until the 23rd of May. He said the government is asking everyone to stay at home as much as possible. He mentioned some of the sectors are listed as essential and are required to report to work. The operations of the judiciary, magistrate, supreme courts of judicature, industrial court, the environmental Con commission, equal opportunities, tribunal, tax appeal board, legal services continue, sittings of the house of parliament and meetings of cabinet or any committees thereof, sittings of the THA, meetings of the Assembly, any committees thereof, operations of the diplomatic corps, primary emergency services remain. Of course, our state and private emergency ambulance services, all emergency call centers. Minister Young said the number of persons gathered at public places remains at five. And though the regulations were updated to include that all retail and membership discount stores be closed, he said they would be able to remain open. On the international scene, investigations are continuing into what led a sixth-grade girl to pull a handgun from a backpack at her Eastern Idaho school on Thursday and open fire, hitting two fellow students and a member of school staff. We get the details from Reuters Television. The girl's name and exact age were not immediately released. Jefferson School District Superintendent Chad Martin says students were immediately sent home with their parents and that classes would be canceled the following day. We train uh, very frequently with the sheriff and also on our own for situations. I don't think we can ever fully be prepared, um, but I feel like our staff reacted and our students reacted in the best possible way for the best possible outcome. Um, we will obviously take time over the next days and weeks to, to reevaluate and see where we can continue to improve. Several law enforcement agencies are investigating the shooting, which erupted shortly after 9 a.m. local time. Depending on the outcome of the investigation, Jefferson County Prosecutor Mark Taylor said charges against the girl could include three counts of attempted murder. Medical staff said none of the gunshot wounds were life-threatening. The school staff member is being treated and released for his injury, while the two students are being kept overnight for observation. Idaho Governor Brad Little issued a brief statement shortly after the shooting, writing that he was staying updated on the situation and thanking school leaders and law enforcement for their efforts. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. <laughs>